Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and I'm going to help you look at sound. And we're, we're looking at it right now. This is actually an audio waveform, and you can make it using the audio waveform effect in After Effects, which is pretty easy to use, and I'll show you how to use it. So let's, uh, let's get into it. Uh, as you can see here, the audio waveform is this funny-looking thing over here on the right. Uh, that's an audio spectrum. If you want to learn about that, click on that. But if you want to learn about the audio waveform, Let's do that. The first thing you need to do is get some audio. So, go get some, dummy. Um, this is some French ragtime music. I'm going to just drag that wave file onto the comp here, and that makes a comp as long as the thing you dragged onto that button, and using whatever composition settings you were using last time. In this case, I am using a 1080 25 frames per second uh, composition. So, let's enjoy that. First thing you want to do is create a new solid that's cool. Um, and then we're going to use the audio waveform effect. Just drag it on there and look at that. Oh, that's a cool waveform, man. That's a really good. You know, you got these this line, this pink line. It's not very good. And this is why a lot of people don't use these generate effects, especially the audio spectrum and waveform, just because they don't start off looking interesting. But we're going to go through this effect and we're going to make something that eventually looks like this. And that's, you know, it's interesting, right? Isn't that? Isn't it a little bit interesting? I mean, you know, there's a lot of things going on on that layer, but you know what? We'll get we'll get to all of them. I'll show you how to do them all and uh, you'll feel better when you do it. The first thing to do is let's go through the audio waveform layer and help you understand what this effect does and what it is and what it's interacting with. So the first thing is what does it want? It wants some inputs from you. First thing is, what audio layer do you want me to look at? Well, look at the French ragtime music. Yeah, that's cool. If you want to hear the music, uh, press the decimal point on your keypad. If you want to see some lines move and then hear it, hit the uh, zero number there and RAM preview or hit the RAM preview button. That's pretty good. And as you can see, it looks like something's being pushed through this way, doesn't it? Isn't that what it looks like? I mean, there's other ways to look at the audio waveform. Just select your audio layer and hit LL and and then uh, and then zoom in here on the timeline and uh, then you can see quite clearly what the audio waveform looks like. In fact, these look curiously the same. The audio waveform plugin is just showing you what this looks like up here in some kind of interesting visual way. So. Try not to worry too much about it, and uh, we will try to learn how to exploit it for our own uses. The first thing is you've told it what layer to look at. It's got a start and an end point, you know, so that's where the line starts and ends, and, you know, that's that's pretty interesting in itself, I guess. Um, you could draw a path if you wanted to and have it, uh, have it render along that path. That looks pretty weird. Um, that path could be a circle, which I think would be pretty interesting. But that's, you know, it is what it is, I guess. The next thing is, uh, how many samples do you want? It's at 120 right now, but what does that mean? What does 120 samples mean? Well, essentially, it's 120 peaks and valleys uh, that you're going to see. You can have more, you can have less. You can have just two if you want, and, uh, you know, that looks kind of weird. So the more, the more complicated it's going to be, and the less, the less complicated it's going to be. Uh, let's leave it at 120 before we have to start making tweaks. The maximum height is how, you know, how the difference between the peaks and valleys is going to get. And as you can see, as you make it higher, you might want to actually reduce this just because it starts to get harder to kind of see what's going on. You know, it gets a little bit, a little bit confusing. Like if you know I want a maximum height of 2,000, then maybe I want fewer of these. You know. Um, or maybe you don't. Maybe you like it looking like this. You know, do whatever you want. The audio duration is how big of a sample it's actually going to look at. A good way to sort of visualize that is, look, look here. You can see that this frame is taking up a lot of sh a lot of nothing and then some jags, and that's exactly what you're looking at here. A lot of nothing and then some jags. Well, what if we uh, increase this? What if we say 250? Well, now it looks like. A lot of jags, some nothing, and then some stuff. Well, isn't that this? This, that's this. That's a bunch of other frames. So it's it's expanding the number of frames you're looking at. Well, reduce that, please. That's too much. Put it down to 40. 
and that'll show 40 will just show what this frame has to offer you know and you know that's kind of nice or maybe even 90 just show me what's on either side of the frame I'm happy with that but it starts at 125 and that's pretty cool too now the audio offset is how far left or right from the playhead you're gonna look so you might want to offset it a little bit plus or minus um, thickness is how thick is the line and softness is how soft or hard the line is um, all these are cool things and uh, the next thing is uh, the inside color so what's the middle of the line gonna be that can be whatever I don't care do whatever it's your life um, what's the outside gonna be and as a general rule of thumb you usually make the outside a little bit lighter than the inside because you want to make it look kind of glowing and now you get some waveform options so you can have mono which is a composite of the left and right channels you can have just the left or just the right. We're going to actually end up making two, so I'm going to make one that's left and I'm going to make one that's right. The display options, you can have analog lines, you can have sort of digital lines, see how digital that looks. Hold on, I'm just going to comp it on original so we can see it. We can have analog dots. Ooh, those dots are neat. And uh, But I'm going to stick on analog lines. And I've got composite on original, which means whatever is under it, it's going to composite this line or put this line on it. Um, so that's audio waveform the first. That looks pretty good. Congratulations. I'm actually going to duplicate it just so I have two. And the second one I'm going to make red. Um, I'm going to make it red with red. Red, red. And instead of left, I'm going to make it right. I'm going to make it the right. So now we can see there's a difference between the left and the right of uh, this thing. So that's pretty cool. And uh, as we watch it through, it's like we have uh, red with blue on the outside. Or you can have it the other way. I don't really care. Do whatever you want. Everything that we put on top of this, we're going to use to try to jazz up what's beneath it. And the general rule for these things are, it starts with the first thing you put down, and then the second thing comes under it, and then under and under and under. What kind of things do we want to apply to this? Well, I know at some point I want to put a glow on it, just because glows are interesting. Um... I know I want to put Venetian blinds on it, just because I think Venetian blinds are cool. I don't know why I think that, but, you know, it's just just something that, that I think. I'm probably way wrong, though. I mean, I'm way wrong about a lot of things, but I like that it makes kind of like this TV scan lines look. And to truly appreciate it, I need to throw another solid down. I'm super sorry. So, boom. So now it looks kind of like, ooh, scan lines, cool. So, that's, that's kind of neat. That's got kind of a weird look to it. Um... And uh, let's see, what else can we do? Let's actually put the glow above the lines. Cool, cool. Um, and let's use a, uh, a mosaic, perhaps. Let's throw a mosaic down here. Um, and this divides everything up into blocks, and you can divide it up into however many blocks you want. But this helps to kind of get like a an old-time digital look. So, so that starts to come across looking kind of funny. Um, but really, what you choose to do with it is totally up to you. Um, you can see back on this one, I had a ramp, I've got a bulge. Um, the bulge is pretty neat because it kind of kind of buoys out what things are uh, looking like. So if I go in here and I go bulge, and I apply a bulge to it, uh, the bulge uh, is like a circle, and then you can expand how big the circle is um, kind of like whatever kind of like that that's cool uh, stick it up there and don't bulge that much but you can see it makes this cool like kind of weird kind of weird thing going on so I like that it's it's not totally necessary you know depending on how you intend to blend these effects out and uh, in fact one of the things I want to change is that maximum height put that down to like a thousand man that's stupid and the height of this one, how high do you want to be? Boom, that's way better. So, you can use this for cool stuff. Um, this is just like a small example of how you can turn an ugly pink line into something a little bit more interesting. And I'm sure you guys are way cooler than I am, so you'll be able to make more interesting stuff. But, you know, it, it's just a way to visualize audio quickly, and then you can use this generate effect to to link in a whole bunch of other cool stuff and uh, and really make something interesting and worthwhile. Uh, I didn't. Uh, this is actually really gross and bad. And I think my first example was way better. I think I was just 
I was way more on that day. I'm just not feeling it today. But anyway, hopefully this helps you understand the audio waveform effect, what it does, how to make use of it, how to do things with it, um, and uh, you get some get some use out of that. A lot of people were asking me, hey, how do I make an oscilloscope line? Well, here's how. Or, uh, you know, how do I do all these things to visualize audio? So the audio waveform is one. The audio spectrum is the other. I have a tutorial for that, too. If you want to check that out, check it out. If you don't want to, then don't. Uh, this one's pretty good. Uh, my name's Evan Abrams. Thanks for watching my After Effects tutorial. I'm going to try to cover as many effects as possible on here just so you're able to, to learn about them and help incorporate them into things. Uh, if you have any requests, uh, send them to me. If you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments here or tweet them at me, at EC Abrams. I'm on here checking comments all the time and trying to respond to all of them, so hopefully that helps. Um, if the tutorial has made you angry, uh, I'm super sorry, but... Um, Hopefully, this soft French ragtime music will help soothe your angries. What do you think? No? No, not doing it? Oh well, who cares? I'm Evan Abrams. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more, and I'll see you around the internet. Thanks, and have a nice day.